Good morning, great souls. This is a reading from Whispers from Eternity by Paramahansa Yogananda, entitled, Burn Thou My Frailties in the Furnace of Trials. In the furnace of trials, the ore of my life is being purified. The fire of experience melts away all my delusions dross. O divine artisan, burn away all my impurities. Bring out in me the steel of endurance and hone it to a fine edge of deep calmness. Forge in me from the tempered steel of mental balance sharp swords of self-control and firm tenacity. With the weapon of inner equilibrium, teach me to fight every enemy of distraction. This topic today, Victory Demands the Courage of Conviction, is a strong topic. When we think of courage, often we might think of the warrior in battle who is fleeing for his life and he realizes that someone is left behind in, at the peril of his own pain and potential death, he goes back in to save someone. Think of someone like Rosa Parks, the, um, the great soul in Montgomery, Alabama, who was asked to move out of her seat, and she said, I will not. And just the inspiration that that courage inspired in others I think of my grandmother, my, mom, my mother, when she was 16 years old, her father died. But it wasn't just her. There were 10 children that my, mother, my grandmother had to raise. Think of the courage in our own lives that we face day to day, the courage of our own loneliness sometimes, waking up in the morning, the courage of a single mother doing their best to raise their child as best as they can. Where does this courage and this inner strength come from? So that when we have it, it's available to us. We think of courage as a quality of the soul that is there when fear, a wind of fear is trying to overtake us. And that's, that quality of the soul of courage just comes in and just wipes out that fear when we need it most. I was thinking how when I was younger, um, there was something called Nintendo. And in Nintendo, I would, there's always, there always like a level. And at the end of the level, there would be like some sort of challenge you'd have to make, or like a monster or something you'd had to defeat. And always, usually, when it's your first time like going up against this monster, you'd always pretty much fail. I'd have to start from the beginning and go again. But once you, you've learned the different techniques of how to de defeat this monster, you're able to rise to the next level. And so it is with courage. You know, with these techniques that we have on this path, we're able to practice these things when they're easier. So when that challenging health concern comes in our life, when that unexpected this or that comes, we, ha we can more summon that inner strength and power when we need it most. Yogananda, as a young boy, his, name, his birth name was Mukunda, and he was going to one of his schools. Um, interestingly enough, Yogananda lived in four cities as a child, up to the age, about the age of 13. And there was a bully at one of his schools who was, uh, you know, the bully was tall and Yogananda was about half his size. And this bully was just picking on younger kids and, you know, beating at them. And Yogananda, he said, enough of this. And he went up to the bully with just, just great courage. He's like, you stop this right now. And all of the bully's companions were kind of taken back. They could feel this strength and courage coming from this little boy who was half this bully's size. And so the bully just went after little Makunda and just picked him up and just threw him on the ground. And Makunda was stunned, but he got up and he went after the bully and just put his hands around his neck and he just wouldn't let go. And the bully is just picking him up and thrashing him back and forth. And the bully's, he can't breathe. And Makunda would just not let go. And the bully's like, oh, oh, let go. 
He said, will you stop? And he said, yes, I'll stop. And so he drops Mukunda. And then eventually the bully get, catches his breath and he starts to ram at him again. And this time, the little reinforcements come to his help. <laughs> so when we have our courage, it's not just our own. It's we have reinforcements from God to help us. And as an older man, as Mukunda now as Yogananda, um, interestingly enough, there was like two or three times when he was kind of held up at gunpoint. So there was one time, <laughs> which is interesting. <laughs> so there was one time when he was in New York City and uh, three men came, came up to him and one of them had a gun and said, give me your money. And so very calmly he handed over and he said, I want you to know that I'm not giving this to you out of fear. I have a wealth in my heart that makes this money by comparison seem like nothing. And he said, I looked at them with God's power. And they burst into tears, gave the money back, said, I can't live this way of life anymore, and just fled. <laughs> I mean, what courage, what inner strength, but at the same time, what calmness. You know, courage and calmness, they really go hand in hand. Um, close your eyes a moment and just imagine that you're in a forest and the wind is just blowing back and forth. Leaves are blowing everywhere. Imagine the trees are streaming back and forth. And as you walk through the forest, you come to a lake. This lake, the, there's waves on the lake that are just distorting the image of the lake. And then all of a sudden, it becomes still. The wind dies down completely. And you see before you that the, the lake becomes perfectly still and glass-like. And you can, you can see the reflection of the mountains and the clouds and the trees around. And you can open your eyes. It's that type of stillness and calmness that we're trying to get into with our soul. Because in his, in his book, uh, how to have courage, calmness, and confidence, Yogananda said, calmness gives the devotee the power to overcome all obstacles in life, that those who can remain calm under all circumstances are invincible. Now, those are powerful words. And so that calmness, what happens when we have that calmness? Well, most of us have an identity crisis as we proceed on the path. And what do I mean by that? We're born, we have a personality, we have all these, as Swami Kriyananda said, these bundle of self-definitions that say, this is who I am. But as we start to practice these techniques of meditation and go deeper in our spiritual life, even if this isn't your path, but as we start to have that, that thought in our mind that I'm looking for something else that is more real and lasting, and we start to interiorize our energy and interiorize our consciousness, we start to feel our, the calmness of our souls and then those soul qualities. And that's what I mean by we start to have an identity crisis <laughs> because we want our soul nature, our true self to come to the surface. There is a story of a lion. And this lion was pregnant, very, very pregnant. And she was hungry. This lioness was pregnant and hungry. And she was walking by the forest, uh, the edge of the forest. And she used this she all these sheep and went to jump. And in the exertion, the baby lion was born. And the lion, in all the confusion, this baby lion f flees with the sheep. And it turns out this baby lion grows up and starts to live with all this flock of sheep. And so the shepherds would see these sheep nearby and there's this full grown lion with the sheep and it's bleeding instead of roaring like a lion. And so one time a, a, a lion was coming by and sees this sheep lion and said, this is very interesting. Why, the, the, why, is, this, why is this lion fleeing from me with the sheep? Doesn't know it's a lion. And so he'd scratch his head and he decided he was going to um, you know, pounce on this 
sheep lion and see what, what the deal was here, ask him some questions. And so he gets this sheep lion and pulls, pins him down and the sheep says, no, no, I'm a little sheep. And he says, no, 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 you're a lion, you're a lion. He says, no, no, I'm a sheep. And he's bleeding. And so he takes him to a pool, takes this sheep lion to a pool. And his eyes were closed. And he says, open your eyes, open your eyes. Look, you're a lion, you're a lion. And he opens his eyes and he saw that he was a lion just like him. He said, don't bleed anymore. Roar like a lion. And he roared and he became a full-fledged lion. <laughs> so it is with us that we're bleeding like little sheep you know, in weakness and sickness and why is this happening to me? And we, you know, we, we have our fears and we make them bigger through our imagination again. And again, I was telling Nanda Devi recently how, you know, speaking for myself, so much of my suffering comes from a situation that I make so much bigger because I imagine the things that could go wrong. You ever find that to be true in your case? <laughs> you know, and I think if, if I don't, elongate it, it is just what it is. As Yogananda said, conditions are neutral. It's how we react to them that make them so. And so we have this image that we're trying to, to realize ourselves in, as a soul, as a line of God. So we come to this reading, um, which is a strong reading. On the surface, you have Jesus saying, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. I mean, I thought this was the Prince of Peace here. And the sword, Yogananda said, represents discrimination. It represents wisdom and determination. It re represents that courage to cut those attachments that hold us back from God, from hold us back from our desire for freedom, desire for inner joy and true happiness in this life. If we think of there are strings that go out in attachment to all these things outside of us that make us, make us happy. Some of the strings are like, if you've ever cleaned your house and there's like that one little cobweb that comes back, you can almost blow it and it breaks. Some of those are really easy strings to cut, but some are more like a cruise ship tug rope that holds that cruise ship at the dock and they're like this. And that's where you need a strong sword that can help to cut that those strings and those things that are holding us back that say, this is where my happiness lies. This is where my fulfillment, I think, lies. And so with this Yogananda star, Christ in this passage is talking about, you gotta, you gotta use this cord to cut these attachments. And it's a strong imagery. And then he said, I came to bring, have man at variance against his father. I mean, Mother against daughter, that's strong. But we get to understand it in the right context. It's the attachment to it. It's not the, the family itself, but it's the attachment to it where if, they're try if there's a sense of anything, not just family, any sort of situation that tries to pull us downward, when we have a firm conviction about where we're trying to go in our life and the improvements we're trying to make, that's where Yogananda said we have to have fir firm resistance. Now, that doesn't mean we stop loving. That's the difference. Sometimes when we're new on the path and we're enthusiastic, there might be this overzealousness where we might be saying something like, okay, I'm living for God and I'm renouncing you, family. Not in that sense. I, I want to share a story that might illustrate this better. I have a nephew who is just a delight. And so he is somebody who's always wanted to have these wonderful experiences. And so one day, he's 16 years old, he tells his parents, I'm leaving tomorrow on vacation. And they're like, what? <laughs> yes, I'm going on a cruise to the Caribbean. And they're like, what do you mean you're going on a cruise? Yes, I've paid for it. I've, raised, I've saved the money myself. I'm going with my friends and their parents. I've taken care of all my schoolwork and I'm going. And they're like, you can't go. And he's like, no, I'm going. And he says it with this smile on his face. And they say, well, I, I, I can't not go now. I've already paid for it. And they're like, well, what are we going to do? <laughs> he's paid for it. He's been responsible. And he's such a delightful person. I mean, it, he didn't have that attitude of, you don't understand me, mom and dad. You don't understand where I'm coming from. He just had it with joy. And so he didn't do this once. He did this several times. <laughs> One of the times he goes to France. <laughs> 
All that to say, you know, Yogananda said, while loving my family truly and never limiting my love to them, I realize the greater love of God. And isn't that so beautiful? You know, there's times when others, when we're trying to be more con- convincing, have that conviction in ourselves of where, where we're trying to go with our spiritual life. You know, our friends, sometimes they might not understand. You know, and it's just part of the reality of it. That understanding just might not be there. And what do we do? You know, but if we look at it on, on a, a deeper level, the level of the soul, that our soul and their soul are both on a journey to the shores of bliss. And so in that sense, while outwardly there might not be an understanding, inwardly, on a deeper sense, you know, I think there, there will be that understanding. So, you know, as we move forward in our life, you know, of course we will be tested. And that's why we need to surround ourselves with those people and those in our lives that have the courage that can add to the courage that we're looking for and that strength. We need to attune ourselves to the masters for when, you know, there's situations where we want to be firm in, but we're not sure what the next step is. Well, stand what you know with you, where you know. Stand where you can, there's the firm ground, and then move forward with faith. You might not know the answer, but move forward with that faith and that conviction as best as you can. There might be a mistake, but if you know where you stand and then move forward with attunement to the great ones, then that attunement to the masters and God they can infiltrate our, and just saturate our consciousness. And as we are navigating different situations, we might go in a certain way, but they can redirect us if we're constantly calling, constantly attuning on their consciousness, because it is their power that knows what's needing to happen. And then affirm. We must affirm daily that we are lions of God, that we are souls, and that we are not our weakness. So let's close our eyes now, and let's do an affirmation together. My soul was resurrected. My, soul was resurrected. my power is greater than all my trials. My power is greater than all my trials. Because I am a child of God. With deeper feeling, my soul was resurrected. My, soul was resurrected. my power is greater than all my trials. My power is greater than all my trials. Because I am a child of God. My soul was resurrected. My power is greater than all my trials because I am a child of God. Now silently, my soul is resurrected. My, tr- my power is greater than all my trials because I am a child of God. My soul is resurrected. My power is greater than all my trials because I am a child of God. Feel inside yourself that awakened strength and inner courage. Now to finish this morning's talk, I want to read to you again this, the ending, this um, reading from Rays of the One Light, because this topic of reading from the Bible can be austere. It can seem a little strong, and, but we have to understand in the right context what is the result of that deep austerity that we might be needing to have in our life. And so imagine these words are directed to you because this is, this is, the, this is the goal of what we're trying to accomplish. So here's Krishna describing who we all will be when we are enlightened sages. Unaffected, by outward joys and sorrows, or by praise and blame, secure in his divine nature, regarding with equal gaze a clod of mud, a stone, and a bar of gold, impartial toward all experiences, whether pleasant or unpleasant, firm-minded, untouched by either praise or blame, treating everyone alike, whether friend or foe, free from the delusion that in anything he does, he is the doer. 
Such a one has transcended nature's triune qualities. God bless you. May we always roar as a lion and lionesses of God. Like a river 
that owns to the sea. One hour bounding through mountain vales, one hour winding through a lee. None may linger on the way, none may coax time to stay. Fleeting scenes move by us like a dream, cling not, none will be your own. Never grieve to be alone, go within.